happy finish Friday, everybody. I am loving the fact that it's summer, it's gorgeous outside, and we have really low humidity in Memphis today, so um, it makes me a happy camper. If you're not familiar with the makers, I mean, um, Amy Howard at home, I welcome this is Finish Friday, and this is where we tell you all about how to do finishes on furniture. That is, um, that's my strike zone. That's what I love. A lot of you don't know, but I, I manufactured furniture for about 26 years and developed all the finishes that would go on the furniture, um, as well as did a private label line for F. Schumacher for 18 years, um, as well as Robert Allen Beacon Hill for 18 years. So finishes, developing finishes, um, and putting them on furniture, cabinetry, places, and interiors, that has been my strike zone for most of my adult life. So I love the fact now that I have this product line called Amy Howard at Home, and I teach you how to be able to create those looks that I had on my furniture yourself. That's why we call it Enjoying the Bragging Rights. So today I'm gonna to show you something that can go on a lot of different surfaces. If you've never done marbling before, it's a lot of fun and it's really, really easy. You've got to have the right tools, and there is a way to be able to learn how to do it, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. Um, the other thing that I do want to make sure, as far as telling you how to do this, is that you know how to be able to prep and take care of different surfaces that you can do it on. So, I'm going to be showing you how to create a marbling look on some tile today because a lot of people want to repaint their floors, they want to be able to do their countertops. So you can use our one-step paint on top of tile. You can use it on top of Formica. You can use it on kitchen cabinets. You can use it on walls. You can use it on wood. You can use it on linoleum. So any of these surfaces that you want to be able to get a marbling look, it's not going to be a problem at, well, at all. Because the one step paint has a special bonding ability, it will adhere without any prepping or without anything that you have to do other than just paint it on. Now, the thing that we do tell you to do is that you need to clean it first. So any surface that you wanna be able to use the one step on, let's clean the surface first. So um, you cannot clean a surface for putting on a chalk based paint or any paint for that matter, unless you get the surfactants off. So a lot of people like to paint the tile around their, um, their mantles. You can even marbleize your mantle if you want to. Clean it with a clean slate first. This will get the soot off. This will get any wax, residue, cleaners off to be able to give you a nice squeaky clean finish to be able to get started. So I've just got this sitting out here because I wanted to show you. Um, so you want to make sure that you paint any surface with your um, one-step paint after you've cleaned it. Now you'll notice I like working with a foam roller like this because it's gonna give you a smoother surface. Don't use a roller with a nap because the nap, meaning a thicker, a nap is a, is a thicker roller. That thicker roller is gonna give you almost an orange peely um, pebble look. And I want you to be able to have a smoother surface as possible. I prefer also that you not brush it on because brushing it on will give you brush strokes. When we are working with marble, it's important to really have a nice, smooth surface. So, you can, um, look at me for just a second. You can uh, spray it on if you want to, and I'm okay with that. But if you are going to be doing marbling, I really would prefer that you use a foam roller and roll it on or spray it. So, and I forgot to tell you, we're coming to you live Central Standard Time um, from Memphis, Tennessee, it's 12 noon. So if you're catching us live, um, send me some love, let me know where you're from, send me some hearts, and ask me questions. I have two very gorgeous, able people here on Instagram and on Facebook, and they're here to ask questions from me, because here's the deal. One, we have the best students and people that use our Amy Howard at Home products in the world. They're so smart. Um, they do great projects, and that's why if you aren't part of our Amy Howard at Home before and after group, please join it. And then that way you can see all of the projects, the before and after uh, projects that all these people do because we want you all to enjoy the bragging rights and it's an opportunity for us to share your projects on our Instagram and our Facebook. So we want the whole world to know how talented you are. 
So um, be sure and ask questions because that way other people that are watching are sitting there going, oh my gosh, I'm so glad they asked that question. I was thinking the same thing. There are no dumb questions. It's all how we learn. Allow me to take the 30 years I've been doing this um, to be able to empower you to do better projects. So, um, so we wanna make sure we clean a surface, whether it's for mica, yes, you can do your countertops. If you wanna make them look like a faux white marble, you totally can. The technique that I'm showing you today can also be changed up with different colors. You can do the same technique working with um, different kinds, whether it's a Monte Carlo marble or a serpentine marble, which is greens and blacks. If you wanna go into Monte Carlos, which are more browns and creams, um, your, your color of your base coat's gonna change and your veining colors are gonna change. But Carrera marble is a white marble. Um, it's very hard to find. It's gotten to where it's, it's one of the most expensive marbles to get. Um, so you can even mix up doing gold veining um, or different colored veining in with this if you want to. So I want to give you the basics. I want you to have an understanding of layers um, and double Oreo cookies, that type thing that we talk about, and, um, and then go from there. Are there any questions thus far? Are we good? Um, somebody's wanting to know if the videos will be available after. The videos are available on Facebook afterwards. So Instagram, when you do a story, it goes away. Um, and that's the nature of Instagram. But so you can go over to our Amy Howard at Home Facebook page and they live there in perpetuity forever. So that way you can watch them. And we love you sharing them with people. Let's share the love. If this is something that you have learned, um, then share it with a friend and say, this is something I thought you might find really interesting and it will help them. Because here's, here's the difference. Um, because I do develop the product, because Jean and I own the company, um, I personally take to the, the time to be able to teach you and educate you why we're doing the product, why we are developing this, and how to be able to use it. What really feeds my soul is seeing how it changes your life, how it can change your business, how it can help you make your home more beautiful. Our, our homes are our havens. Um, they're where we live. They're where we bring friends in. They're where our family gather. And it is, to me, a very soulful experience to have a beautiful home. That's why I call it crafting a beautiful life. It is, our life can be more beautiful. Okay, I'm stepping off my soapbox and I'm getting back on as a teacher. So, all right. So I have this tile that I have painted with the, with the one step paint. Here's the beautiful thing. One, it's a gorgeous color. This is done in ballet white. This is not Bauhaus buff. If you want a warmer marble, then start with Bauhaus buff. But ballet white is our whitest color. Um, at Amy Howard at home in the one step. So it gives me that beautiful flat matte chalky finish, which is great. It's bonded to the tile, which is great as well. I didn't have to prime it or anything. Um, and there are no VOCs. Now, there are three things that you're gonna need today. You're gonna need your glazing liquid that acts as a protectant. It makes it even hardier against, um, especially if you wanna use it on a floor or a countertop. It thins it down, but it does have a, a, a type of a varnish and a protection in it, um, and you can mix that. This is also no VOCs, and it's water-based, and you can mix it with, um, with the one-step paints. The reason I have a black here and a white is because I'm going to mix my veining color. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mix that veining color. So I've, it's going to take just a little bit, and that's why these little pots are so perfect because they will go so, so far and doing projects like this. So I'm gonna take out, I've already painted my tile in the ballet white, and I'm gonna take just a little bit of the ballet white, put it in here. Don't forget to ask questions, guys. When you ask questions, everybody gets to learn from you. All right, I'm gonna take just a tiny bit of black. You wanna be able to mix up enough paint to have for your entire project. So I'm gonna get the color that I want first for my veining. When you're doing veining that's gonna be for Carrera Marble, you wanna make sure that it's a pale gray color, not too, too dark. You don't wanna do black. You want it to be more gray, all right? So you can come in and add a little bit more uh, later as far as if you wanna have a little bit darker vein, but if you study Carrera, Usually most of them are gonna be like a, a darker gray or a pale black. So I'm gonna stir this up just a little bit. All right, so now I like my color. Now I'm gonna add two things. 
I'm gonna add some warm tap water. It doesn't have to be hot. I just don't want it to, it can even be room temperature. I prefer that you not work with something that is cold. It just doesn't mix as well. And I'm gonna take some of my glazing liquid. So the, the recipe here is one part paint, two parts glazing liquid, two parts water. Is everybody with me? One part paint, two parts glaze, two parts water. You can even go to three parts water if you want because it needs to be kind of thin. All right, so I'm gonna take out my glazing liquid. I'm gonna put this in. This is gonna thin it. It also makes it really hardy. It makes it as a, um, it makes it thinner to be able to work with when I'm doing my veining. Water won't do the job. I don't wanna just add water. All right, now I'm gonna mix this up. So when I'm doing veining, it's pretty thin. You, you never wanna vein with, with pure paint or even something just kind of thin down. You're not gonna be able to get that fluid kind of look that you want, all right? So now, I had some that I mixed up yesterday when I was making this. It's the same thing. But it matches this exactly. So this is one of the tiles that I had done. Um, and you could do this on a backsplash. So if you wanna be able to, I'll, I'll do this same technique on some back of glass and put the glass up. You can, um, and it's really cool to be able to do that. Um, but you can use this on any surface that you wanna be able to put the one step paint on. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do before I start my veining is I'm gonna flood the surface with some water because all this is water based. I'm gonna come back and I've got just a little bit of sprayer here. Now it's time I need to put on my glasses so I can see. Are there any questions? Are we good? Are y'all excited? Have y'all ever done this before? There's a lot of love coming. Oh, I need that. All right, so look what I'm doing. I'm spraying this water. Can you see it? Is that showing up? Is that showing up in the light? Can they see? All right, so the main thing is, I don't want you putting the veining down on top of a dry surface. I want you to get some water there, okay? So get some water on the surface like this so it's wet. You wanna make sure that it's everywhere. I'm gonna move this around just a little bit. All right, so the other thing I want you to think about, think about South America. I want you to think about different countries. Think about, look at me for just a minute, Facebook. So think about how the shape of the country and how it's larger and it's kind of bulbous as far as, and how it will come down into a smaller area. And then another continent as far as how it'll get larger again and how it will come in. The other thing is when you're thinking about this and you're doing your veining, I want you to think about going from the upper left-hand corner to the lower right-hand corner. So you're working, this is a 45 degree angle, so now you can look down here at what I've got. So from upper left to lower right, or from this area over here. So we're wanting to work in a 45 degree angle, which is what this is, and think about South America, think about it getting larger and smaller, and don't think about it being like a snake. You want to be a little bit more rigid. So once you've flooded that surface, I want you to be able to take a turkey feather. I was going on a walk this morning and I saw, we don't know if it's a hawk or a owl feather, but I could have brought it today. It was a beautiful brown and white. Main thing is, is it needs to be um, about this long. I mean, this is probably about 12 inches long. And you do want to make sure that the type of feather that you're working with is a little bit hardier. You can't use a softer bird feather. Like if you're like, oh, there was a little cardinal or a little robin or whatever, those don't work. You've got to use something like this that's more like a turkey feather, it's, it's hardier. Um, and you can wash these and you can use them over and over again. So, um, all right, so I'm gonna dip this, make sure that my glaze is mixed up. If you're just now popping on, we've mixed up a glaze. It's one part paint, three parts water, three parts glaze. So I'm gonna load this up on my feather, like this. Well, I probably need a larger container to be able to get this in. I can tell that now. This little bowl just didn't do it for me. So offload it just a little bit. I'm gonna lay down just a little bit on here. 
Now remember, I have flooded this surface with water, so that way I'm not laying my glaze down on a dry surface. That's a really, really important thing to do. So I'm gonna lay this feather down, and I'm gonna be working, I'll go up, and I'll pull with it just a little bit. I'm gonna go over to the side and you're gonna be able to watch me. So can they, should I push this up just a little bit more? Let me get it in the light just a little bit more because I want y'all to be able to see what I'm doing. That's not at all. Okay. There it goes. All right, so I'm gonna lay this down at a 45 degree angle. See, it's more fluid. Pull that down, come over here. Hang with me, because this is a process. I can actually take a little bit of water off. See how working with the feather itself makes it look a lot more natural? Some people will work with this and do it with a paintbrush. You're never gonna get the look that you want. Now I've got a little bit too much water on here. So I wanna show you something right here. This is one of my glazing brushes. Um, it has a copper band on it like this. And I can come back in and I'll pounce that. Let's come around real, let's get where you, they can see that. I'm gonna pounce that in just to soften it. See, it's a gradation, it's not a lot. just a little bit more. This is gonna be a little bit like watching paint dry, guys, so I apologize. So I'm gonna come back in and pounce that. See, I don't want it, I don't want your veining to be stark white, like this is here. So can you see the difference with the camera as far as the difference between this being stark white and see how that's been gradated? You've got a medium value and then it's a little bit darker. I'm gonna take just a little bit. I've got a lint-free rag. Always make sure you're working with a lint-free rag here. Do not work with lint. It's gonna get all into your, your paint. So I'm dabbing that just a little bit. It was just a little bit too wet. So I'm gonna take my feather again. I'm gonna put it down in my paint. Move it up on my feather just a little. And then I'm gonna come here Remember, I'm working from left to right. Lay that down, pull it over. See what will happen naturally, these little, almost like little fissure veins. Now, watch here. See, I'm gonna, I've got an area that just naturally pulled out. I'm gonna come up here, and I'm gonna connect them like this. Keep it fairly straight. Look at that. Is that able, are you able to see that on the camera? Mm -hmm. It's like watching Bob Ross do treaties. Mm -hmm. These are happy veins, guys. Happy, happy veins. Now, look what's natural right there. Just, I'll take some of that. I'll add maybe a little bit more paint. Have a little bit darker. See that? Pull that over. Connect that. That way there's an area in between. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Pull back just a little bit, Facebook. Let them kind of see what it is that we're going for. So do you see how you've got lighter value veins? You've got some that are a little bit thicker. You've got some that are a little bit darker. And I can come back with my glazing brush as it starts to kind of set up like that. I can pounce it. I can soften it because I want it to be this continual gradation that looks very natural and not contrived. So many times when people are doing veining, this is what they do. I'm gonna do it on the paper because I want you to be able to see. They do this. They look like snakes. Or they'll take, they'll take an artist brush and they'll try, they're basically, they're, they're making it look like this. That's not, you don't want that. Let's come back over here and look again. See how these little natural fissure veins, the only way to be able to get that is gonna be with a feather. Let's go back to the Renaissance. 
Let's go back to Italy. Let's go back to Venice. When they were doing faux marble on columns, they used turkey feathers. This is the same process that's been done for hundreds of years. So it really allows you to get the most natural looking veining when you're gonna be doing marbling. Now, you'll notice most of the time what I'm showing you is at about at a 45 degree angle. You can come across it just a little bit if you want to and I'm gonna show you in just a second. Look how I'm just kind of blending that because I don't want any area that is a stark white color. Love that, so, so pretty. Now I'm gonna come back on top of it and just to add just a little bit of vein. Again, I'm working with the one-step paint with a glaze. Look at that, look at that tiny little area on that feather, see how I can lay that there like that? I'm gonna come down here just a little bit and then soften it. I don't want it to be too veiny. All right, so now what I need to do, I could continue to play with this for a while, kind of come back off of it just a little bit so they can see it from up top. Now turn it around and just let them. I'm gonna come across here just a little bit with maybe a smaller, I wanna be really careful. Bang, that way, kind of go in the opposite direction. I want to be real careful not to do too much of that. I may just kind of pat it just a little bit, flood it out where it looks a little bit more natural. If you get a loose hair in your paint, I don't have any up here, but what I do is I'll usually do a little loop of some tape. Let me see if I've got any down here. No, of course not. And. Uh, Okay. You see it? Yeah, if I can get it. Oh, fingernails. Here, I got it. Thank, Thank you. I'll play. just. All right. All right. So now I want to hit this with a hair dryer really quickly. It's going to dry really, really quickly because this is just the one step paint. With our glazing liquid, it's going to allow you to be able to see the variances of the color as it starts to dry down. Yes, this is like watching paint dry. I just want you to be able to see, I've got to dry this just a little bit because I want to show you another real important step of this is to be able to make a glaze. Are there any questions so far? This must be scaring people. Is this scaring y'all? Oh. Can this be done on an end table? Yes, you can do this on a piece of furniture, the top of the piece of furniture. I love doing Tostana finishes with faux marble, faux marble top. They're fabulous. I don't know if y'all were part of that, um, trip that I took you on to, Nat to Atlanta and I was showing you all those Italian pieces that had faux marble tops on them, but you can paint marble tops on top of pieces of furniture that you're painting the bases and it looks amazing. They've also asked to buy the feathers. You can buy them online, but you just need to get white turkey feathers. Alright, so I'm going to just Speed that up just a little bit. There was another question. Will one step adhere to glazed porcelain bathroom tile? Yes. Make sure you clean it really good. And the longer, this is, you know, this is the mistake a lot of people make, is they don't allow enough time for it to cure. It's going to be really, really important to have a longer curing process on a ceramic tile. But yes, you can use it on ceramic tile. Good question, love that. Okay, so now, just like we did before, I mixed up a glaze. So I used um, one, part, one part paint, 
three parts glaze, three parts water. So I've made just a little bit of glaze here. Now, my veining has dried. So what was the first thing that we did? We came back and we flooded the surface with a little bit of water. We veined it, we glazed it. I just wanna make sure that when you're veining that you've got this beautiful soft shadow of the gray coming in and around your veining. It's gonna make it look a lot more natural. And then I want you to get some lint-free rags. And then you can work with either a chip brush or you can work with a glazing brush, either one. This is a really, really important step in you doing your marbling. Now we're gonna cover it entirely. This is gonna vein it. This is when, I mean, um, act as a glaze, it's gonna soften it. It's gonna make it look a lot more realistic. You don't ever need to leave your veining raw like this. It's always got to have a colored glaze sitting on top of it. It sets it back, and I usually come back with a color that I did first, which on this, what was our first coat? It was ballet white. So I'm just putting the ballet white back on top of it, but it is mixed with a glaze, so that's why it's nice and thin. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of make a pad with my lint-free rag. So I'll hold some back, pat it like that, so you've got a nice flat edge. Don't use a paper towel or anything that's got ribbing on it. And then I want you to come back and softly, even when I'm doing this, when I'm taking this off, I'll work in a 45 degree angle. And I'm patting it. Do you see how that sets it back already, guys? Does it look, doesn't it look a lot more natural? If you don't do this, it's kind of offensive. When you look at real marble, when you look at real marble, it's softer like this. A lot of people, when they're veining, it's just too, too, too strong. What were you gonna say? Dramatic. <laughs> but look at that, isn't that gorgeous? You can do this in such a way that it looks very authentic, but that's the importance of making sure that that glaze that you've put on top of it is there. Otherwise, it's gonna be way, way too strong. Now remember, if you're just now tuning in, you can use the one-step paint on tile. You can use it on Formica. You can use it on kitchen countertops. You can use it on cabinets. This is just a great finish to do on top of furniture that you're painting the base of it and do this on the top. It can add, especially if the, if the base of it is done in our one-step black with some light wax, some dust of ages. Oh my gosh, it looks like a million bucks. Look at that. I am loving that. That is so pretty. Love it, love it. All right, so now then I'm gonna need this to dry for about 20 to 30 minutes. It'll go matte again. It'll be completely matte. And then I'm gonna come back with my matte sealer. This does have a little bit of a sheen to it. Um, and I'm gonna use my sponge roller again. And I'm just basically going to apply two coats of this sealer on top of it, and then I'm good to go. You can come back if you want to um, with some wax after you do the matte sealer. I'm trying to think if I have some. If you want to, you can come back and you can use the Mind Your Own Beeswax or you can use the light antique wax on top of it. Let it, come to, let it come to tack or to cure about 30 minutes and then buff it. And the only reason I say that is because if, that, if you're doing floors, don't do that. Don't use the wax if you're doing countertops or floors. But if you're painting the top to a piece of furniture and you want it to look like faux marble, the Italians who've been doing faux marble tops on furniture for hundreds of years, thousands of years, um, it does have a pretty waxed finish to it. So it's pretty just to buff it. It gives a beautiful patina, um, and it'll be something that you'll really, really be proud of it. I am loving this. I'm hoping that you're seeing how you can transform these pieces, the tops of pieces. Um, the bottoms look great painted, and then do these faux marble looks on the tops to them. Um, or you can do it on your kitchen countertops, wherever you want to be able to have a faux marble look. So anyway, hopefully this tutorial, this Finished Friday, was helpful. Um, if, if you have conversations with people, they love to rescue and restore furniture as well. 
share it with them. They'll be grateful that you did. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Let's go rescue some furniture.